Hi everyone, welcome back to Kind of the Mind with me, Zeline. This week's topic is bipolar. Let's get right into Song of the Week for this week. For this week's Song of the Week, I chose Manic Depression by Jimi Hendrix. That song basically, in an essence, kind of makes you feel so understood about how crazy everything is in your mind sometimes. We go through a lot of emotions in a day and we experience a lot of ups and downs, but people with bipolar disorder go through them 10 times worse. I feel like this song helps you feel like you're not alone Alone, and I think that's okay with music sometimes. It doesn't have to be all happy and sunshines and rainbows. Sometimes when an artist writes something and you can relate to it, that's just as healing. Plus, Jimi Hendrix is awesome. I hope you guys give that song a listen and I hope you guys enjoy it. Now, let's get into Facts with Kelly. Hi, this is Kelly from Fieldstone Counseling. Happy Friday. Today, we're gonna to be talking about bipolar disorder. What is bipolar disorder and what are its symptoms? Bipolar disorder is also known as manic depression and it is a mental illness that brings severe high and low moods and changes in sleep, energy, thinking, and behavior. Question two, what is the difference between depression and bipolar? People who have bipolar can have periods in which they feel overly happy and energized and other periods of feeling very sad and hopeless. The difference between depression and bipolar is there's just not that up period or mania. But bipolar is typically broke down into two types, bipolar 1 and bipolar 2, which have to do with the person's level and pattern of mania and their major depressive episode. Mania is defined as three or more of the following symptoms abnormally upbeat or jumpy, increased activity or energy and agitation, exaggerated sense of well-being or self-confidence, decreased need for sleep, unusual talkativeness, racing thoughts, distractibility and poor decision making. Major depression will look very opposite where a person will have a very sad and empty depressed mood, lack of interest, sleeping too much, loss of energy and unable to think or concentrate. Question three, how is bipolar diagnosed? Diagnosis of bipolar disorder typically can include a physical exam to rule out any other medical related issues, a psychiatric assessment to gain more insight into your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors and patterns that might be happening, mood charting, you might be asked to keep a daily record of your moods, sleep, and other factors to help determine the diagnosis, and you must also meet the DSM-5 criteria to get an official diagnosis of bipolar disorder. My last question for Kelly is, what are good treatments for someone with bipolar? Treatment for bipolar disorder will all be about managing symptoms. The client will often need to start taking medication right away to balance their moods. Also, therapy will be vital, not only for the client, but also for the family to help them understand the condition and find ways to be supportive. Other treatment also known to be used is ECT or electroconvulsion therapy. And that is used to send electrical currents to the brain to intentionally treat trigger a brief seizure that can help make changes in the brain chemistry. This is done when none of the above is working. Thanks for listening and I hope you guys have a great weekend. It's the end of my senior year, so my mind's been pretty crazy lately. I've been trying to prepare for my music audition that's supposed to be coming up soon. I'm finishing out my last year of high school ever. I have to think about prom, graduation. I have a lot going on up there, especially with all the day-to-day -day things I have going on up there already. Sometimes I just need to kick back and relax and have fun but I never know what to do. I sat down and, in my opinion, came up with some fun things to do and maybe you guys will find them fun too, just in case you're bored or you just need to let loose and let go of all that struggle that's holding up in your mind. Maybe you're more willing and fortunate to go out right now. Maybe you're vaccinated already. Here are some things that you guys can do to go and have fun. You can go bowling. I know bowling might sound childish or boring to some people, but if you get a couple of your friends together or maybe some people from your family, bowling could be really fun. You can go outside or go to your local park. Parks do sound boring, yes, but maybe you can have a picnic with your friends or walk down the trails. Maybe you can go bike riding, maybe you can play a sport, just anything. There's a lot of things you can do at the park. You can go out to eat at a local restaurant in Grand Blanc. But let's say you can't see anybody right now. You're kind of locked up at home, which is totally understandable and I totally get. Here's some things you guys can do too. There's a lot of live streaming concerts happening right now because, well, the pandemic. Find your favorite artist, see if they have a concert coming up and live stream it. 
If you have a family around, you can play games with your family. I know you might be sick of them now, but it's always fun to play games. You can go outside. Maybe you're gonna ride a bike or skateboard or just sit out there and enjoy nature because it is so nice out lately and you need that vitamin D. You can go on Pinterest or straight up Google and find a new recipe to make with your friends or family. Or you can teach yourself something new or get better at a skill that you already are good at. I like in my free time sometimes when I'm bored to draw, and I'm not the best drawer, but I like getting better every time I do it. I hope that gave you guys some ideas or at least some inspiration to go have fun and let loose with your mind because yes, this year has been stressful, but it's almost over and it's almost summer. All right, you guys, as always, thanks for watching. Stay kind to the mind, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.